Okay, let's return to Dwayne's drawer of weapons to see how he plans to retaliate. If you look closely, you can see that there is a trident next to the syringe. Just like in our other videos, the trident is here to help you remember that an effective treatment for Hib is ceftriaxone. So, ceftriaxone can be used to treat meningitis, septic arthritis, and epiglottitis. In addition to ceftriaxone treatment for meningitis, rifampin should also be given as prophylaxis for close contacts who have been exposed to the individual with meningitis. To help you remember this, we've shown Credence wearing a hoodie with a rifle that has a bayonet. We use this symbol in our Neisseria meningitidis video, but recall that rifle sounds like rifampin, and the bayonet should make you think of close combat or close contacts. So rifle with bayonet for rifampin prophylaxis for close contacts. Okay, now that we've covered the typable strains of H-flu, let's discuss the non-typable strains. So again, everything to the right side of the tape will represent this. To make this extra memorable, we've shown James's keyboard totally fried with smoke rising above it. In other words, James can no longer type because his keyboard is broken. So you could say that the keyboard is non-typable. I guess in the end, Dwayne got some form of retribution by destroying James's keyboard. Anyway, the broken keyboard should help you remember that everything on the right side of the image is regarding the non-typable strains of H-flu. Because there is no jello on this side of the tape, we can deduce that these strains are not encapsulated. Before we go any further, also notice that smoke is rising from the keyboard as it breaks. We've used clouds of mist or fog in our other images to represent aerosolized transmission, but in this image, it seemed more memorable to show smoke rising from the keyboard. So, the smoke rising from the keyboard is here to help you remember that H-flu exhibits aerosolized transmission. You can see that the smoke is crossing over the tape, so this should help you remember that both typable and non-typable strains exhibit aerosolized transmission. Okay, with this in mind, let's discuss diseases caused by the non-typable strains of H-flu. First, notice that there are a bunch of signs on the wall behind James. One of the signs says conference room, and the other says Michael's office. Signs sounds like sinusitis, so all of these signs are here to help you remember that H-flu causes sinusitis. More specifically, non-typable strains of H-flu cause sinusitis because this is on the right side of the image. 